last one didn't get put in. But um, yeah, we, we um, help people with a lot of different things. We got people losing weight. We're actually going to talk about Terry. She was invited her to come in and tell her her story. Did you get started already? Yes. Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. This is the migraine workshop. Just as a show of hands, does, uh, how many people here do have migraines? How many people have headaches in addition to migraines? And Candy, what, what might you have? I have a daughter. You have a daughter. <laughs> but I've got peripheral right. neuropathy. I didn't see the ad on that. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was about a month ago. We can talk to you about that. Um, well, all this fun stuff we're going to have to move out of the way. I do want to tell you about Terry. It's a little bit of a testimonial. So Terry came in. We ran a test, which we'll talk about, and found out that actually, no, in Terry's case, we didn't even run the test. I said, you know what, Terry, I'm going to recommend two things for you with regard to your migraines. What I want you to do is I want you to go, I want you to go dairy free and gluten free for a month and just do a study on that. So that means no weeds and none of that, none of that stuff that we so really, really enjoy. Oh, you guys aren't filling this out now. You want them to pause? I want them to pause on filling it out. We, we'll get a chance to do that later. All right. So amazingly, she took me up on it for a one month. She said, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, so she, she uh, went ahead and went completely gluten free. And in my healthcare class, we talk all about that and what that means and why they're gluten free and what's this craze and all that stuff. She's like, fine, I'll, I'll give that a try. This is, this is the part she was most excited about, but her migraines are half, are half of what they used to be. Half of the intensity and half of the frequency for as often as she gets them. But this was in, I think it was about three and a half weeks, 16 pounds down. I mean, she looks like a different person. So part of the program, what we're going to talk about with the brain-based therapy, which is our approach towards migraine, is that it's not, just, it's not just migraine, or it's not just headache, or it's not just peripheral neuropathy. We have to look beyond just the brain stem, which is what we're going to talk about with, with um, now I'm on peripheral neuropathy, with migraine. This is, I wanted you guys to see some of these, because these are just from last week. That's a little family that came in today and wrote on the board. Okay, so before I get started, I always cover my goals, because I think that's important. I think we should all have goals. You can write these down if you want or not, but I want to, want to let you know what my goals are for the workshop today, okay? And then these goals also apply towards working with patients on a regular basis. And that is, let's get this, oh, that's going to be good. That is the number one, the number one uh, goal is to reinvent your life. Now, will I be able to actually reinvent your life here today in this one hour? It is possible. Sometimes we get an idea and whether we follow through with that, we can make a, a shift and make a pivotal shift or a pivotal change in our lives. That's my goal. I'm going to aim for that. We'll see if we're able to do that. And number two is ROI, which means a return on investment. So if you're investing, which you are today, each of you is investing time. I'm sure there's a lot of other better things you could do, and hopefully by the end of the workshop, you'll feel like the hour, hour and a half, we're gonna be here for about 53 minutes here, okay? And you're gonna feel, my goal, if I achieve that, you're gonna feel that you got 10 times the value of your one hour, all right? So how do you measure that? I don't know, you get really good information that you're able to take from that, and whether you join my program or even like Terry and say, hey, I'm going to try that idea, and it shifts and makes a big enough difference in your life, then I've done, I've achieved my goal. And that's what it's all about. One of my mentors is Zig Ziglar. He's out of Mississippi. And Zig Ziglar says, look, if you just help enough other people get what they want out of their lives, then you'll get all you want out of your life. So that's what I want to do. So, and the number three thing, and we never hear this about migraine is this thing called an exit strategy. So an exit strategy, well today we're gonna to exit because I'm gonna wrap up the program, but what I mean with, with, with regard to our program, migraine headaches, whether we're talking about bad headaches, peripheral neuropathy or fibromyalgia or whatever the program is, when we accept a patient under care, I'm thinking in the beginning of the care, I'm thinking with the end in mind. Meaning what's the end strategy? When are we gonna be able to be done with this program? And that's one thing that doctors and other health practitioners never talk about. Because all they ever talk about is, well, here, let's try this. Okay, well, let's try this. Okay, it didn't work. Let's try Amatrix. Well, let's try Amatrix shots. Let's try all these different things. Well, Doc, how long am I going to do that until these migraines are fixed up? 
it's not a discussion because all they're doing is treating your symptoms. Your symptoms are bad, and I've had some headaches, and thank God I've never had a migraine. And I'm just like the wimpiest guy because I get a little headache, like on a level two of a 10 scale of pain, and 10 is the worst you can imagine, and I can barely tolerate it. So back to, the, back to my goals, if we get that exit strategy, that means we're wrapping this thing up, we're teaching you the skills and retraining your brain so that we can put an end to this thing called migraine headaches. I should really probably introduce myself by talk to you about my goals. If you haven't figured it out, it's the Migraine Workshop. I am Dr. Brian Prax. I am a chiropractor. This is way beyond chiropractic. I'm not apologizing because chiropractic itself has an 84% success rate on headaches, including migraines. Just plain chiropractic. So if you haven't had experience with that, then we'll talk about that too. I am a I am certified chiropractic sports practitioner, so I do a lot of work with sports and ankles, but Although that's really fun, I'm really kind of moving into more of these chronic issues because I really feel like I'm changing lives. When I fix up somebody's ankle and they can walk better, that's a significant thing. But when you can take care of somebody's fibromyalgia and put them on a totally different track, then you're really starting to change lives. And that's really where I'm going with this. Uh, certified uh, chiropractic sports practitioner. I also am board certified in integrative medicine. So not only does that mean that I integrate with other practitioners, and we have some really good practitioners that we work with, but we're going to look at other things, not just the spine and not just the brain, but we're going to look at other things in an integrative sort of fashion. And lastly, I'm a diplomate from the American Association of Integrative Medicine. So if you look at my name, you look at all the initials behind that, that might match up with your doctors. And I love hearing this. People come in and they say, I've got the best doctor. I had somebody come in the other day and say, I've got the doc who worked on my knee. He's the number five doc in the States. Now, I don't know how they come up with this ranking system. Did you ever hear that? This guy here is the number one migraine guy in the world or whatever. I mean, who comes up with this stuff? It's amazing. So I think that they're doing it themselves. I figured I'd do that. I'm the number one migraine guy here in Charlottesville. So now you can tell all your friends. I'm the this room. Definitely in this room. Okay. Well, I have to you know, compete with my wife, too, because she is a chiropractor. Oh, okay. um, but definitely in this room. And what really matters, though, is not the number of letters behind somebody's name or whether he or she is in the top five ranking of the world or treated everybody on the UVA team and is the, um, you know, athletic trainer for, um, you know, the Baltimore Ravens. I'm totally off on my football team. Is there a Baltimore Ravens? Am I getting mm -hmm. basketball? And, okay, I'm not. You know what I mean, okay. So it, none of that matters, and that's what I want to talk about. Okay. So yes, I'm qualified to care for migraine. And yes, for the last 17 years, I've been taking care of patients with migraine headaches. But to you sitting in that chair, that doesn't matter. See, what really matters is one thing and one thing only. Those are results. Those are results. So what I want you to do for the first thing on there is I want you to write down a website. Does everybody here has access? Can we get a pen up here? Oh. Actually, I got one right here. Maybe bonito. This is where we did vacation in Mexico. <laughs> Write down this website. It is lifechangingcare.com. Do you have any blank paper? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody has yeah. some blank paper. So grab your blank paper. You yeah. put that on the front. You might want to reorder it because we're going to have we're going to take a lot of notes. Life changingcare.com <clears throat> and on lifechangingcare.com you're going to go to testimonials on testimonials you'll you'll see all the different conditions that that uh, doctors in the brain based therapy program work on of course you're going to look at migraine and was it Marie or Candy that said I have peripheral neuropathy Candy said that so you can look at peripheral neuropathy and since this is fresh in my head the last time I checked for peripheral neuropathy there were 113 testimonials of people with real live people with real live peripheral neuropathy who got actual results in the brain-based therapy program. That's what we're going to talk about. With migraine headaches, the number is 141. And I just looked at it right now. There's literally 141 other people with migraines who have written testimonials. There's probably countless thousands of others who didn't post up a, uh, um, a um, testimonial to that. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, Dr. Um, Michael L. Johnson is the author of this book right here. And he is also the creator of the Brain-Based Therapy Program. So it's, what do you do when the medications don't work? A non-drug treatment of dizziness, migraine headaches, fibromyalgia, and other chronic conditions. 
Dr. Michael L. Johnson. He's a board certified chiropractic neurologist, and really speaking, he probably is the number one chiropractic neurologist in, in the US. So to use that thing, okay? So what do you do when the medications don't work? I have a, several copies of these. I have loaned this one out, but it is signed by my mentor, Dr. Johnson. Now, if you lived in, in um, Appleton, Wisconsin. We used to. Yeah. If you lived in Appleton, Wisconsin, then I probably would have to say, you should probably see Dr. Johnson. He's the man. So you don't have Dr. Johnson unless you want to do that travel, but what you got is me. So see, I'm the number two chiropractic. <laughs> okay? <laughs> But he is the creator of the brain-based therapy program, straight out of Appleton, Wisconsin. And what he's done is he's put together, he's really figured out these chronic conditions from a neurological perspective and has created a natural way of getting over migraine headaches with the exit strategy. So in a sense, he's the father of brain-based therapy. <clears throat> All right. On your sheet of paper, and most of you have pretty good, right here you can write down the word migraine, okay? Or headache, if you want, whatever. We're going to put it right in the center. We'll put migraine. I'm going to put migraine. All right? And I, I checked with everybody. Everybody here except for Candy has migraines. Do you have other headaches also, like tension headaches? And Marie, do you have tension or sinus headaches? Anybody yes. have? Familiar with cluster headaches? Do those good mm -hmm. factor in? You have that too. You're familiar with that? Um, it pounds, and yeah. I don't just care why. Well, I don't care ocean. why. I just don't know what the yeah. official name is. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Okay. So there are, are approximately, according to the Mayo Clinic, just just recently pulled up on their website, 45 million sufferers of headache every single year in the United States. 45 million. So you're all one of that statistic. Of that, 28 million are migraine sufferers. So that's what we're going to talk about. And don't try to write all this down. This is straight from the Mayo Clinic, and it ties in beautifully with what Dr. Johnson has put together. So I do have to read it. Mayo Clinic, migraines may be caused by changes in the brainstem. That's important. And its interactions with the trigeminal nerve, a major pain pathway. Imbalances in brain chemicals, including serotonin, which helps regulate pain in your nervous system also may be involved. There's a lot of mays in here, and a lot of you have heard that there's some neurological, vascular, blood connection, genetic, and so we have all those factors. We really don't have it all figured out right now. This is what the Mayo Clinic says, and it's totally in agreement with what Dr. Johnson found, two different ways of looking at it. Serotonin drop levels drop during migraine headaches. This may trigger your trigeminal system to release substances called neuropeptides which travel to your brain's outer covering or the meninges. Oh my gosh, this is, this is the Mayo Clinic talking about exactly what we're doing here with our brain-based therapy. However, their approach is, is one of a throw some drugs at it and see if we can't get this system to shut down, all right? But what that happens is you have side effects that come along with that, nasty side effects too, okay? So since they talked about brainstem over here, we've got the brain right here, We've got the spinal cord that travels down inside your back. Right in this area here is the brainstem. Right in that area here. Interestingly enough, there are cranial nerves, which, which are nerves that come off of the brain themselves. Cranial nerves that come off of and have the root at the brainstem. One of those is the trigeminal nerve number five. And the trigeminal nerve not only goes to the eye, where you can feel that eye pain, but it also has three distributions in our face like this. We've got one distribution, one, two controls this area here, and three is down here. So trigeminal nerve connected to the brainstem. Majorly important right there. We're going to talk about that. There's another nerve that, that Mayo Clinic didn't talk about that has its origins and roots right in the same similar area of the brainstem, and that's cranial nerve number 10. Cranial nerve number 10 is known as the vagus nerve, and that vagus nerve comes out of that same area. Vagus is, I think it was, I think it was Greek, but he was the wanderer, okay? Vagus was the wanderer, and so is the vagus nerve. It's the one that comes out of the skull, comes all the way down and feeds information to all of these nerves to about this area here. It even, hits some, it even controls some of the large intestine, and some of, so, uh, uh, actually it doesn't control our reproductive organs, but from about the kidneys on up is what that vagus nerve controls. And it's a nerve that comes right off of the brain. So that's why we call it the cranial nerve. 
All of that is going to be majorly important to figuring out migraine headaches. Okay? What I, want, what I want to state is the surprise statement here, and is that none of you have, and this fits for peripheral neuropathy too, I'm going to tie you into this as well, none of you have just migraine headaches. That's a pretty bold statement. See, what you have is a, physio, a web, just like a, a spider's web, of physiological dysfunction. So even the Mayo Clinic is saying, yeah, there's a serotonin thing, there's this brain stem thing. We know in chiropractic that 84% of all headaches are related to the cervical spine. It wasn't even a chiropractic study. All the great studies come out of medicine because they got the money for it. But we find out that 84% of all headaches are related to cervical problems, neck problems. So is that ringing a bell for you? A lot of times, a lot of my migraine patients and headache patients say the same thing. I always get this tightness in my neck and then from there I'm thinking, oh no. And then it seems to kind of go on and then it's, it's this unstoppable thing. Okay? It's the same thing with peripheral neuropathy. It's very rare that anybody just has pain burning or tingling in their feet, arms, or hands. It usually has to do with other systems in the body in addition to that. All right, so what you have then is we know you have migraine headaches, so for sure, for sure we know that there is some neurological, neuro, we, we know that there's a neurological component. We know that for sure, okay? Because for any pain, for any pain at all, even if I just touch your knee right there, that's sensed up here in the brain, the parietal lobe, this area of the brain right here. So we know for sure you have migraines, we know you have pain, but there's also a neurological component that we have to look at. So we need to study that. And that's why I handed you the neurological assessment form. And if you guys can make sure you fill that out before you leave and leave it at the front. This is what I do is I look at that neurological assessment form and see what else might be going on. And as an example, I'm just going to tie it in with you. With peripheral neuropathy, there's almost always, there's about a 90 to 95% correlation to balance problems with peripheral neuropathy. Almost always. Because our balance has a lot to do with whether we can feel the bottom of our feet or not. Okay? So neurological component right here. We also get to find out there is some chemical, the neurotransmitter. I didn't want I didn't want to blow you away with all kinds of form, but there is another form if you decide to, to start with our program that we have you fill out called the neurotransmitter assessment form. We have all these assessment forms. But if we don't look, we're not going to find. Okay? So we know for sure, if you guys can follow along, write this down, we're going to draw out the web. We know you got a neurological problem, so write that down, and write down neurotransmitter if you want to spell the whole thing out. This is our web, okay? I want you to walk away with something, okay? We're going to walk away with at least some information. Got a neurologic problem, and we know there's something going on with the neurotransmitter. We already said from the Mayo Clinic that that's something going on with serotonin. Serotonin. Very important. Okay. From the research, we also know that there's more than likely, I've never seen it without, some sort of structural problem. How can I say that? Well, check it out. At the top part of the spine, here's C1 right here. Marie's grabbing her neck right there, her shoulders and all that. Right at the top part, right here is the mm -hmm. top part of the spine. Right behind that and a little superior to that is the brain stem. If there's something going on with the cervical spine, it is neurologically, it's impossible for it not to affect the nervous system. So we have to look at that. And the Imatrix is not going to affect spinal problems. Yeah. Um, if migraines have something to do with serotonin, or most migraine sufferers, do they also show signs of depression and anxiety? That's pretty darn common. That's pretty darn common. And then we have to figure that out. Well, is that due to all the darn pain and how it's robbing your, you of your life? Because that could be, a, that would put me in depression. Yeah. You know, I want to go on a bike ride this afternoon. Well, if I'm flat out in bed and I got my 14-year-old wanting to go on a bike ride, I'm probably going to be depressed over that. But is that also related to serotonin, dopamine, and all that? Yeah, there's probably that sort of web. So that's a good question, Robin. That's a good question. What? When you talk about that area right in there, yeah. I've had um, a massage, several mm -hmm. massages before. Only one person's ever really done that. They hold the neck so that it's, you're not, you don't feel the weight of it okay. somehow. And it's up in here. And yeah. That feels really good. That feels really good. So what they're doing probably, and it's holding it, but maybe a little bit of a little bit of traction this way, so kind of pulling it up. Oh, it so good. And what it's doing is de decompressing. It's decompressing the spine, 
the muscles which get so balled up in there, the spinal cord, and what we said from the Mayo, this is what's so beautiful, the meningeal system. So we've got to talk about that too. The meningeal system kind of goes with the neurological system. The meninges are coverings that go over, that lay on top of the brain. It's kind of like a, um, kind of like a plastic bag. If, if, we, if we're marinating chicken, it's the chicken inside and then the bag that goes around. That's a good analogy. Then the bag that goes around that, the Ziploc bag, is the meninges. kind of holds the cerebral spinal fluid inside of, uh, that covers over the brain. Okay? And so when they're doing that, we do a technique called neurocranial integration that does happen to a much deeper degree. And that re releases tensions within the meninges. So I pulled the, the uh, Mayo Clinic one because it's like, oh my gosh, here's Western medicine explaining everything that we need to do. These are all physical, structural, neurotonin, neurological components, but they're only hitting it from a chemical perspective. So they're, they're saying that there's actual structural issues, but they're trying to correct it from a chemical standpoint, and it's only going to get you so far. There's environmental triggers that we have to look at. Everybody knows that. I'm sure everybody here can tell me their whole list of triggers from whether it's chocolate to coffee or, or uh, red wine or whatever it might be, light, strobe lights, flashing lights, high noises, things like that. These are environmental triggers. I really want to take just a moment to talk about that because people say, oh yeah, chocolate causes my migraines or coffee causes my migraines. I want to let you know that these environmental triggers do not cause migraines might trigger your migraines, but if environmental triggers like that cause migraines, everybody would have the same experience. So I eat chocolate and I don't get a migraine, so how come they, they're not triggering it to me? Because it's not that that's a trigger, but we have to look at the other things too. We've got to talk about this too because I do believe there's a component here, genetics. Now we always like to you know, complain about it and blame our parents for everything, but not in, not in Robin's case, okay? But there, there, there seems to be a correlation, genetically speaking. There seems to be some sort of connection with genetics and, and our family tree. So what can we do about that? Well, there's this other thing that we can list, too, and we can just put this here. A new, new branch of science called epigenetics. Has anybody heard about epigenetics? Most fascinating thing in science with genetics right now. The, the, the uh, researchers are finding that it's not just genetics, what the genes are passed from mom and passed from dad, but it has the fact to do with things outside of the genetics that can turn genes on or off. That can turn genes on or off. So many of us might have the genes for a migraine gene or a celiac sprue gene, but it might not be until outside environmental triggers trip the switch, just like a switch on the wall click, now you have celiac. It was there the whole time, it never got clicked on, but because of how you've been eating, because of other environmental stresses, stresses in your life, click, you just now have celiac. This is what they're finding. So it's not just genetics, it's also a factor of environment. So we always talk about that. Well, there's this genetic component from mom and dad, and there's this outside component of how you're, you know, what's going on in your life. So. We talked about the, all of this so far, and that's the reason why we want to look at the neurological assessment form, the brain stem, the neurotransmitter connection, the trigeminal. Hey, I covered all that in that slide already. So if on your neurological assessment form, which I don't think anybody get to that one, that's the second one pager. It starts with right, left. Are you right hand or left hand? I need a star. On your neurological assessment form, if you have filled out this <laughs> metabolic assessment form, and then this, the other one is a neurological assessment form. So if you have four of those checked as yeses, then that means for sure you've got something going on with the neurological system. And this ties oh, together. She just took the highlighter and went like this on yes. <laughs> I got all that. Well, I have a couple of those. Yes. Okay. So what I, I like to say is that if you've got four of those checked off at least, then you definitely have neurological issues in addition to migraine, which is a neurological issue. Okay. So everybody should have a lock under under her chair. I want you to take that for right me. Usually hand these out, but we put them in a most convenient spot right underneath there. Can you? Do this even for peripheral neuropathy. So I want you to everybody wants you to dial in a four on your lock. Rob, you get that one. That one's going to be really special. Sound right. Yeah, we're going to dial in a four. 
You already got a four. You already got it partly figured out, Beth. You got the thing. You 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 dialing it in already. So on the left hand one, is, is there a four in there? Okay. So on the four. it all up for you. Okay, so the first one is four. So if we have four, four issues checked on our metabol our neurological assessment form, we've got a neurological issue. So here we go. We're on our way to unlocking the, the, the trick, unlocking the lock to, to migraine headaches. Okay, so what I want to talk about is neurology. So with our brain-based therapy, I promise that you learn about this, and this is what's really exciting. If you haven't guessed, I'm really excited about this program. The program that Dr. Johnson put together. Hey, Dr. Jennifer or Jeff. Yes, sir. Can you grab some of my uh, brain-based therapies, like let's say the eye lights and let's say the optokinetic tape. While he's pulling all that together, it works. Brain-based therapy works like this. Around 15 to 20 years ago, scientists, neuroscientists, started figuring out. My goodness, we used to think and we used to teach that once you're about seven, eight years old. For however many nerves you have in the brain and the nervous system, it's about all you're going to get. It's about all you're going to get. No, nothing can't make any changes with that. But 15, 20 years ago, thank you. 15 or 20 years ago, what we actually found that mm, that's actually not true. We can actually rebuild brain tissue. And brain researchers, neurologists, and people in the brain-based therapy program are are helping to correct things like stroke. This is Okay. like weakened areas in the brain. And my best analogy is like physical therapy. So let's say in physical therapy, you go in complaining of muscle weakness or arm weakness on the right side. The therapist goes, oh, okay, takes a tape measure, measures it here, measures your fat, does a bunch of different measurements, compares it to this side and finds out, sure enough, it's only 10 inches on this side and it's 17 on that side. Yes, I figured out why you have a weakness on the right side. You have a weak muscle. And so what are we going to do? What we're going to do is we're going to stimulate that muscle through exercise. Right? So they'll have you lift the weights here and then here and then push down and do all these different exercises. And over time, the muscle has plasticity, meaning it can change. You can actually change. You can actually get it to grow if you stimulate it in the right way. And now over time, 12 visits, 24 visits later, Measure this again, measure that again, hey, it's coming up. Pretty soon, this 17, this is 17, we're doing better, we're more balanced out. That's brain-based therapy, except for not doing it to the muscles, we can do it to the brain and the nerves, including the brain stem, including the cerebellum, which has to do with balance, okay? Here's how we do it, from a number of different ways. <coughs> First of all, and this is one of my biggest things for migraines, and this is a clue that you guys can try, okay? Just like I told Terry, you can try. Drink a lot of water, okay? I was just kidding on that because I'm really thirsty, but water is important. Water is really important. <laughs> With these things called eye lights, what you guys can do, you may not be able to afford these. This $250 pair of glasses. They're really special, though. You may not be able to afford the glasses, but you can afford a pair of even cheap sunglasses that are red. Red, okay? Red or rose colored or pink, okay? But for our guys, we don't like to wear pink, so we wear red or rose colored glasses. Just by wearing a rose-tinted glass, I know we have metaphors about that, looking at things through rose-colored glasses, but what we find is that that color therapy has been shown to reduce the, the over-firing of the midbrain, or the, the, the brainstem. What happens with, with um, migraines is the midbrain or brainstem over-fires. It fires too much, and when it goes, goes and goes and goes and goes, that will stimulate trigeminal nerve number five, Okay, which goes to the eye. It also stimulates oculomotor nerve, which is cranial nerve number two. Oculomotor nerve is the one that makes the pupil get big or small, and so a lot of migraine sufferers, it's almost, it's almost classic with this, they get sensitivity to light, okay? and that's why they wear the glasses. So what happens is brainstem overfires because it's getting improper brain input, cerebral input, okay? so we have imbalances within the brain, the brain is supposed to put the brakes on the brain stem. If none of this is happening, the brain stem is overfiring, just like punching the gas on your car. Eventually, you're going to blow up the engine. Okay. So what we find with color therapy is red, pink, um, 
uh, rose-colored glasses actually slow down, or what we say inhibit the brain stem. Okay. So as a proactive approach for headaches, or as a proactive approach, and you can even try it. So you know when you're when you're in a migraine, you'll notice that you're probably wearing glasses anyway. So go out and find some. You can actually Google it too. You can actually get glasses. Um, you can put um, rose-colored glasses or something like that online. They're like fifteen dollars. So for a pair of glasses, I'm not saying Bob, that that's going to like fix all of your all of your headaches. Pass it down. Very okay, soothing. And you found that soothing already. So hey, that might be the that might be the one uh, return on investment that you just got out of that. So rose-colored glasses. Okay. So go ahead and try that on, and you'll find that what it does is it just calms down that brain stem, which is what Mayo and Dr. Dr. Johnson both agree on. With our with our glasses. What they do is they not only do the um, rose-colored glasses, which calm the brain stem down. Um, what? I think that. I'm sorry, it's my... No, I'm not going to be able to get my glasses back. Do you like them, Marie? Mm, I, I couldn't, couldn't tell. It's too soon. It's too soon. Mm. Then we can we can not only do we can not only do the the um, color therapy, but we can do this. So you'll notice that we have lights flashing on the left side. I know they turned off. They stay on for two seconds. And then they go on, and then they stay off for eight, and on for two. This is set up with a person that we found. You'll notice it's, it, it's lighting up on the left side here, and the left side of that eyeball. Okay, the left side of the left eye and the left side of the right eye cross over to the right side brain. So this was when we did the exam. This was somebody who had a right side cerebral hemisphere that was under firing compared to the opposite side. Back to the parietal lobe, which is sensing your pain from a migraine headache. So this is a way, just like doing exercises for the bicep, here's how we exercise the opposite side right cerebrum. Remember that crosses over. So we actually have people wearing these glasses just like this, color therapy, eye light therapy. They're sitting there and at the same time, we might do something else. Did you want to try this on? We might do something else like oxygen therapy. One of the things we do in our exam is we'll stick your hand in the, in the uh, perfusion index and we're able to measure how much oxygen is getting all the way out here. Oxygen is a huge component. For everybody, you should know this, the most the oxygen dependent tissue in the body is the brain, the brain stem, and the, all the whole entire nervous system. Okay? So a lot of my migraine sufferers will have low levels of oxygen. You're surviving. It's not like you, you, know, you have COPD or emphysema, but you have low levels. And that's just one other trigger that we might look at as part of the web of physiological dysfunction with migraines. So one of the things that we recommend, we really recommend, is doing things like yoga. Or, don't like yoga, try some deep breathing, okay? biofeedback, things like that, that you could do on your own, at free, by getting a lot of oxygen on a regular basis. In the office, we have oxygen concentrators just so we can heal this brain up, but part of the exit strategy is we're going to teach you how to breathe. It's a big component. Okay? So those are a couple, those are a couple different things. Um, this is another one of my really favorite ones. Works really well. We do have to be very careful with this because it's actually powerful. And I'm really excited too because I just got an Android. They had it on the iPhone, but they now have it on the. You can actually get this as an app. I kid you not. And what it looks like on your phone is you got the screen right here, and you got these little lines like this, and they go, they just go by like that. And what they do is they they create an optokinetic reflex. So back to the eyes, we can stimulate the eyes here, which go back to the brainstem. So it goes the other way. Now I'm a, I'm a right-sided brain. Those are actually set up for me. But so I'll do what I'll do is I'll start myself on the left side. As I'm moving left to right like this, you're going to see my eyes nystagmus are moved back and forth. Which by doing the eyes like that from left to right, brain stem, cerebellum, frontal lobe, and parietal lobe. And stimulate. And that's how we do it. So everybody can watch my eyes. Can you see my eyeballs? Just watch them move. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Right. It looks like Halloween. <laughs> this is pretty wild. Did you see it, Ben? That's, that's, yeah. Right. That's, a, that's called a nystagmus, and that's an optokinetic nystagmus. Is when the eyes do this. Every time there's there's seven of these. Every time the eye does that, it's going back to and stimulating the brain stem. Mine does that when I'm off balance. What's that? Mine does that when I'm off balance. Your eyes go into nystagmus. Yeah, they just. Yeah. They feel like it. I they can't feel like see it. Yeah. So see, I didn't feel that because this is an unconscious thing. Because brain stem and cerebellum, those are all unconscious things that we don't have control over. I can't consciously make my eyes go that fast by doing it. It all happens all on its own. And you want to have those too, huh? Yeah. All right. 
So optokinetic tape, we have the eye lights, we have color therapy, and now I'm a chiropractor. Even before joining up with Dr. Johnson's group, I found great response with just chiropractic. But I have learned a few things, though. On migraines, you can't go in and start wailing away on people. On some of my peripheral neuropathy people, I can. They're, I mean, neurologically, they're okay. It's just that they have trouble feeling their feet or their hands. Not on a migraine, and definitely not on fibromyalgia people. I mean, I will blow them out of the water. I'll admit to you guys, I've made mistakes. I really have. I've created migraines in people. And that is not fun. That's not good for business. You do that. <laughs> hey, let me help you with those migraines. Oh, you caused a migraine. That's me doing too much, too fast. So the types of adjustments we do will not be <laughs> kind of adjustments. It's too much. There is too much of a good thing. We can blow you right out, right out of the water. So we will start with, I don't have it here, but it's a little, uh, do you have my, uh, can you show them the uh, pull star? Oh, it's not, actually, it's not hooked up. We'll take the activator. Okay. If the rose colored glass is supposed to reduce the brain stem activity and then yeah. the Dr. Soup's tape is supposed to increase it, is yeah. that like Only on one side. Oh, okay. Only on one side. That's an excellent question. It reduces or inhibits the brain stem that the color therapy inhibits the overfiring of the brain stem. But we'll find that, remember, there's a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere of this. You've got left side, right side of the brain stem. And if it's out of balance like this, then we want to bring it back into balance. So here's what Imatrix does, and this is the same thing as neuron gabapentin or anything like that, is we find that there's asymmetries within the nervous system, and all these medications, including ibuprofen, inhibit. They do this. But you notice you still have the asymmetry. There's no medication that's going to do this or do that or anything. But the brain-based therapy, like the physical therapy, can do this. And so what our goal is really is to do this and then this to get optimal function out of the brain. You first want to get balance, and then you want to increase the balance. Okay? You want to increase the, the uh, capability of the brain to function. This is called an activator. It, it doesn't electrocute people, but it's just little handheld clickers like this. Okay? So since I know I'm right side brain, I can demonstrate on myself. If I were to do this up here at my C1, right there, bam, it, it, it stimulates the receptors, the nerve receptors here, which fire up. I've just fired up with that optokinetic tape with the eye lights I put on and one little click to this side, I've fired up my right side. I feel better already. You want to fire them down? You want to fire them up. You want to fire up the weak side, Beth. So if it's like this, I want to do this. Okay. I guess I could do that, but I'd rather do this because this is also talking about your neurological threshold, how you're able to tolerate things. So you'll probably notice that when you're not, you haven't gotten enough sleep, when you're not eating like you should, when there's other stresses in your life, you're way more susceptible to getting a migraine. Okay? That's because, that's because your threshold of toleration, being able to tolerate stress with not enough sleep, not eating right, and all these other things comes, comes way down. So your threshold is decreased. And then the little weather change happens or something, you're like, oh, it must be a barometric change or something. It's because your threshold is so low. So look, we need to do this, and then we need to train it up to go here. So again, weather doesn't cause migraines. Weather doesn't cause migraines. Beth feels like it does. All right. But see, Beth, if it did, I would get migraines too, and so would your, your friends and everybody else around you, because we're all experiencing the same barometric pressures. But what's happening is there's, there's something within you that's not able to respond appropriately. So what we need to do is we cannot change the weather. We're trying to. We can't change the weather. But what we can do is change how you respond to that type of stress and other stresses. That's what it's all about. All right? So does that make sense? So with people who come in for our, for our migraine program, remember, we're, we're still keeping the exit strategy in mind. I don't want you to become dependent on me, on my therapies. I might, I might recommend, hey, those glasses are working so well for you, I can get you a discount on them. It might be worth that $200 to get that pair of glasses after we're through the program. Okay? It might be worth it to you to go get into yoga or something and get some regular deep breathing. That's going to keep these migraines away. But this is the, the utmost importance to me is working on this with you. Okay. I cannot guarantee I'm going to make all your migraines go away forever. You just stick with me for the six week or six month or whatever we decide program is for you, you're going to be gone. We have to work together. If you come in and, you, and I'm a gardener and you say, my garden's all messed up. Look at those weeds. They're four feet high. And I go in with all my friends and, and we dig out all those weeds, all the root, even the roots and everything. 
Well, if you don't follow up with some sort of maintenance and keep that thing under control after I've done all the hard work, you're going to be calling me up and saying two months later, or two years later, saying, "Yeah, your program didn't work." Huh. You're going to have to make. You're going to have to step up to the plate with me too. This is this is all working together. All right. So. The nervous system is really tied together with the body system, and we can no longer just look at the nervous system. We know, as we just discussed, this is a majorly important component, but it's not the only thing. So many other things are tied in with the nervous system and influencing and affecting the nervous system. Well, let's, have, let's have a few examples. Let's talk about this one. This is huge. Let's talk about thyroid. I want you to write that down. Do you know that there's a thyroid receptor on every single cell in the body? It's massive. If we find out that you got some sort of thyroid thing going on, we need, to, we need to address that. We need to help your thyroid work better. Because any problems in the thyroid, I don't care if it's hypo or hyper or Hashimoto's or anything in between, if you've got a problem with that, it's affecting your whole body, including your nervous system. I'm not saying you have a problem with that. I'm just saying that's something we have to look at. There's another thing, too, called adrenals. And I know a lot of us, especially Americans, we're burning the candle at both ends, and sometimes I feel like I'm burning it in the middle, too. Well, that burns out the adrenal glands. It's important to be able to release cortisol, but the adrenal glands are what affects our sleep cycle, our circadian sleep cycle. Well, I just said, if you're not getting the right amount of sleep, you're, you're more apt to get a migraine. Well, we've got to look at that. If your adrenals are dialed in and they're perfect, you've got a good circadian sleep rhythm, and you're totally clear on that, great. Cross that off, you got that one done. Your thyroid perfect, good, we're all good there. Your stress is taken care of, all right, that takes care of the end. You see what I mean? We have to keep looking, though. We've got to figure out all these components. And most of you are sitting here shaking your head going, yeah, yeah, I got that. I think I can see how that can be related. See, this is where we have a web of physiological dysfunction. We're going to talk about the gut because this is, this is big also. When we talk about the gut, we're talking about everything from the stomach to the small intestine, the gallbladder, the pancreas, the spleen is tied in with that. We're looking at the large intestine. The liver is really, really important. The gut, okay? All of this is important. <coughs> I'll give my wife as an example. Give my wife as an example. She has a sensitivity to gluten. So we think about all oh, this whole gluten thing, and what's this, this all about gluten and all that. It's the, it's the protein found in wheat. And I teach about this in my, <coughs> bless you, in my healthcare class about how the wheat has been genetically modified and it's no longer what it was when you all grew up. You all grew up, okay? Now Robin's been growing up on the, the dwarf wheat her whole entire life, but there has been significant genetic changes that make it a different product than it was pre-1970. Okay, it's completely different, so that it's not just a fad. And, and humans are really, really reacting to it. So this, I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of fads out there with eating and, and um, all different kinds of things, stay away from this and that and everything, but wheat is one of those. My wife has a gluten, excuse me, a gluten sensitivity. Now everybody is affected in different ways, and it just so happens that in her case, if she gets any little bit of gluten, it can sneak right in. I love, um, I'm not going to mention the name of the restaurant, but we went and she got some sort of soup and she figured, oh, she came back here and she's like, oh my gosh, what did I eat, what did I eat, what did I eat, I've got to be more careful. She got a soup and we think that there was some sort of maybe a filler or, or some sort of um, thickener. a thickener probably in the soup, probably had wheat in it. It's <coughs> minutes later she's scratching. That one person, uh, Terry, there was another person earlier who also has a gluten thing, and she noticed that just being off gluten, and I keep picking on that gluten, but now she knows her eczema is clearing up. It's most of me, it happens with kids too. But it also big time affects the nervous system. I want to talk to her about where do you find some gluten free stuff? Yeah. Truly gluten free, and that's so expensive. So, Maria, we have adopted a gluten free life for us and our family. But that, you don't, you don't have to talk to her because we're writing a book. It's not quite done yet. I'm so close to it, but this is for, this is for peripheral neuropathy. I have one for migraine. There's so many overlaps. Okay? Just like I said, I could, just, I could wrap peripheral neuropathy right into this. We had somebody talking fibromyalgia. It's the same web of physiological dysfunction. It really is. There's a few certain things. You know, you talk about brain stem. Anyway, we have a whole book that takes people through. Look at that. There I have, flip to breathing. Okay? 
So what do I do? How do I do that breathing? And this can be so overwhelming. And then back here, diet soda, how bad that is. I saw in somebody, none of you though, I'm sure you don't do this. Anybody, anybody here drink Splenda? Artificial? You want to get away from that right away. Okay, that is neurotoxic. Meaning it is that right there. This could be another thing. So you said, oh, I like those glasses. Here's the next one for you. Artificial sweeteners. A known neurotoxin. That could be a huge component, if not the cause of your migraines. These are the things that we're looking for. These are the things that we're looking for. Any of those, so I've never gone that route, but my husband's diabetic, so. Yeah. Okay, write this down. He needs to run from that. You don't need to write that down, too. But for everybody, there is an option on that, and that option is called stevia. Okay. Stevia is made from a plant. There's, is there one? I think stevia is the newest one, but there's. Truvia is stevia. Stevia. Okay. Well, that's what we're using. Yep. So Truvia is just a, a brand name. Yep. You know, right. Right. And you really want to stay away from all soda. It's just all. You, you can't sustain health. Runs through my blood. You can't. Yes. So somebody was asking gluten free. This is what I was flipping in here. It's in here. Uh, just of course right on the spot. I'm not finding it, but gluten is definitely in here. So you don't have to worry about that because it's it's in the book. So. You end up working. You end up, we end up working together. We'll get it to you. Okay? We'll get it to you. It's on my list of important list of things to do. So some of these things are making sense, right? So Beth, if, if there is if there is some sort of all, all um, sugars like that or um, unnatural sugars like what what we're talking about with Splenda or sucralose or any of that stuff, you need to run from that. So just eliminate it, especially if there's something like stevia that you can just move to. Well, that's a no-brainer, or really a big brainer. Yeah, that's a really important thing to uh, to know about. It is known to cause that. So we have to look at the gut. Is there anything that you're eating that could be causing that could be causing, triggering, or maybe even a significant impact to those to those migraine headaches? Okay? If there is, we need to lift up the stone, look, discover it, and then make a decision. Okay. So if we run the test on you, Beth, and we find out you've got a sensitivity to gluten, and, and uh, in my case, as an example, gluten, dairy, it's going to freak you people out, and it freaked me out too, and eggs. No. Yeah. Now, it's not showing up for me as migraine headaches or even peripheral neuropathy or even fibromyalgia, but I have sin chronic sinusitis. And ever since I've been off gluten, dairy, and eggs, I'm telling you, as a testimonial, I'm 90% better. I'm not all the way there, but I'm 90% better. And part of that is from all the damage that I've done from eating these foods that I'm that I'm susceptible to. Okay, and I know that's scaring the heck out of you, but we at least have to look and see what it is. I'm anxious to find out if that's true in my case because my sinus is just bothering me so much, and my doctor finally sent me over for an X-ray. I thought I thought there was you know an infection or a, sure something. There might be. Yeah. Yeah. I've been dealing with it for 30 years. So. It just hurts. Yeah. So yeah. And see, the thing is, is what doctors are doing is they're 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 throwing drugs at it. You know. Of course, there's nothing to throw at this because he didn't find it, and that's good. You want to rule out infection. But check it out. If you have some sort of sensitivities to some of these foods or whatever, and that's creating problems like inflammation, like in my case in this area, now you're more susceptible to an infection too, and you not only got the milk and dairy problem that's inflaming all of your all of your uh, mucosal membranes, but then you're more susceptible. Now you have an infection, and the doctors find the infection. Oh, okay, here's the problem: it's the infection. Mm -hmm. Yes, but why is that there? Then they do the antibiotics, Marie, and that screws up the gut because antibiotics kill all bacteria, the good and the bad. And there's a lot of good ones here that we have to have in balance, just like the brain. And if it's out of balance. Then you're more susceptible to future infections. You see what I'm saying? This is a whole web of physiological dysfunction. Well, the cover up of it. You know what, Marie? It is complex. It is complex. And that's what I wanted you to get. It's not the complexity, but that there is this web. And if we're really going to get an exit strategy on migraine headaches, we can't we can't just look at one piece or another piece or here, try this. If you came to look at what's the supplement he has? Or what's the special twist on the adjustment? There ain't one. It really is not. We sometimes get a hole in one and do one adjustment or one special thing or the color glasses and hey, that was it. Well, that's pretty rare. 
And that can happen. All right, so, so far we've got a whole bunch of different things. We, we can also <coughs> put up your blood sugar, blood sugar regulation. That's just very, very important as well. So I think you got the idea here is that with regard to your migraines, what we have to do is look at the whole entire web of physiological dysfunction. But what we do with our program is we actually run the testing. And we run the testing and run the test that most doctors are unwilling or unwilling to do, think they're overdone, uh, or don't even know about the test. But I will recommend those based on what we see on all the forms that we have you fill out and how you did during the examination. Okay? That's what we do. Because I'm willing to go and look under rocks and see what are we dealing with, but we have to look, we have to look in order to find. Okay? So for those of you who've got that all filled out right here, this is going to seem a little weird, but what I'd like you to do is sign right on that your name. Right on your web of physiological dysfunction. Just sign your name. Sign it right on there, okay? The reality is, and I got this from my mother, and she's no longer with us, but she was a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. I guess that's not anonymous anymore, huh? Okay? But with Alcoholics Anonymous, they say if, if you if you in order to get over your alcohol problem, you have to first admit that you have a problem. Okay. So here we are, we're, we're saying, okay, look, this problem is mine, it's something that I need to deal with. Okay? And if this is the right time, this is the right place, it's great. For each of your locks, I want you now to put a number one on there, so we have a four and a one. The reason we're putting a one is because there's only one person who has this problem, and one person who has to admit it's her problem. And candy, that goes for peripheral neuropathy, too. Okay? So what a lot of times what your so we should have a four and a one. Okay? A lot of times what your what your doctors want to do is they want to say, well look, I'm, I'm gonna just gonna take over and this is my problem. I'm gonna take it here. You try this drug and try this, that, and the other. What I want you to get out of this is like, all right, this is me, this is my problem. Just like my mom did and pull up the bootstraps and I, I created it, I brought it in, it's my issue, and I'm gonna do it. So we have to start with that. The second number you're gonna put in is another one. So a four, a one, and a one. Four, one, one. You can work with me because we'll, we'll, we'll put the four, the one, and the one. And for those of you who have, who have been around long enough, what's the four, one, one? Information. Oh, you can wrong that. Okay, good. Because now you just Google it. Okay? Siri tells you. You Google it. So for four, one, one, what you guys have at this moment right now is information. And really, Beth, if, if the reason you came here was just for the information, I am really obliged that you came, honestly. And if you walk out the door and say, that was just really great, I'm really appreciative, I have that information, that's all you do, I've still done my job, okay, and hopefully you got a good return on investment. If we want to reinvent your life and get you an exit strategy, we're going to have to take the 411 and do some information, we have to do, take some action with that, okay. So if all that I said makes sense, then here are your action steps that you would need to do. And number one is going to be to schedule an appointment so that we can run the testing to see what you've got. So schedule appointment. It would be a good idea to write it down, especially if even you're half serious about doing any of this stuff, simply because there's going to be about five different things that would need to happen. Okay? Are the testing that goes on, is that blood work? Is that looking at different things? The all of the above. All of it, yeah, thank you. You're, you're just one step ahead of me. So what the appointment would include, the appointment that we would do next is I would be going over your metabolic assessment form, the neurological assessment form, and see if there's any other form that we might need to have you fill out. It doesn't cost anything to fill out a form. Okay? Then the next thing what I would do is a thorough neurological exam. I have never had anybody ever say that they've been more thoroughly examined ever in 17 years. So it's that thorough. Okay? There's a thorough neurological examination where we will look at that, not only the brain, but the brain stem and the whole, really the nervous system. This will be a thorough neurological evaluation. In addition to the exam, or during the exam, we will also run a muscle scan. And we'll not only do that for the neck, where we find a correlation with migraines and headaches, but we're going to do it for the full body, for the full spine, okay, from top all the way to bottom. That's a muscle scan, and that is, uh, and then the, the next one that we'll do is an infrared thermography. All of these are totally uh, non-invasive, doesn't put any radiation or anything into your body at all. 
Infrared thermography is looking at inflammation. Very important. So inflammation, infrared thermography. And then also part of the exam is a foot scan. All right, now I'm really getting far out. What does a foot scan have to do with anything? If I discover, I just need to look at this, if I discover that one of your arches, or one of your feet is flat, and the other has a really good looking arch on it, what happens with the flat foot is the knee buckles in like this, the hip drops, and that creates this sort of curvature going on throughout the spine, which can show up way up here. So here I could be doing all my fancy adjustments, my brain-based therapies and all that, and if we didn't discover that the foundation was off in the first place, we're never going to really get that exit strategy. So I run it, oftentimes they say, yeah, it looks good, okay, let's move on, and we do all the other tests, okay? So um, with, with all of that, you don't normal. Do blood work with the thyroid. What's that? You don't do blood work to determine anything. Not, on, the, not on this initial one, because I need to look at the metabolic assessment form and see if it's even looking like that might be something for us to, to um, run a test on. So I don't run all tests on all people. That's a good question. This is an individualized program. All of this right here is this, everybody gets the same here. But it's when I look at the metabolic and the neurological assessment form from that, I go, wow, look at all those numbers you had filled out in the thyroid section. You definitely have something going on there. We need to make a discovery here. Whoa, that's really looking like you've got some adrenal problems. We should really look at the adrenals and see what's going on here. And for the other person, you got some blood sugar regulation issues. There might be something happening there. So we would want to run this test for that. So those are individualized. We don't do that with this first one. We just look at it and make the decision. Okay? Um, on this day, it's you will be in here at least an hour. And most of that time is doctor-patient face-to-face time. It is thorough. It is normally, oh, and then also what we're going to do is we are going to include two follow-up visits for these action steps. And this should be exciting for you because on those two follow-up visits, we're actually going to do brain-based therapy on you. So you can better believe we're going to have those eye lights on you with the color therapy. We're going to probably do the optokinetic tape like we talked about. And then depending on your history, whether you've been to chiropractors before or not, or where you've been, depending on that, we, we usually do two or three different two or three different therapies. On the first one, two or three different therapies on the second one. And with that, I'm trying to figure out how does how does Robin's body best respond to which techniques. Okay? So two follow-up visits as well. Normally all of this, the two sessions, the full-on examination and all that goes for $460. <clears throat> I'm actually, you can bring your insurance card on the first one. We're actually literally not going to charge them at all. It's just between us to see if we might have something we can help you out with. For our workshop, I just did, um, um, Candy, I just did the same exact thing for peripheral neuropathy. So if you are interested, if you want to look at that, Join up, it's fine, we can put you in too. You've been in the workshop, it's a little different, okay? And your exam is a little different. Um, but anyway, it's 90. That's 90 and that includes all of that. <coughs> People always ask, does that really include the follow-up? Yes, it includes the initial examination, we'll spend an hour with you, two follow-up brain-based therapies. You'll have three visits in the office. If you can think about it this way, it's $30 per visit. But you do have to pay 90, you gotta pay it all up front. Visit 2 has the report findings, recommendations, insurance and contributions. Visit 2 is where we'll go over the report of findings, where I explain, hey, this is what I found, here's what I'd recommend. And by the way, it looks like your insurance is going to cover some of it, and here's what they're going to cover, and here's what they're not going to cover, and this is what we think your responsibility is, and where they're going to step in, and all that. So, report of findings. Uh, who they bring? On Visit 2, Wait, write it down. On visit two, <laughs> we would we would need you to bring your SO, your significant other. So that might that might be your mom, or that could be this your spouse. Second visit, second follow-up visit, or second, first follow-up. Second visit. visit, and we'll walk you through that too. On the second visit, on visit okay. two, then that's where I do the report of findings, recommend what I found, make my recommendations, bring your significant other, and we'll also cover, like I said, what the insurance will pay. And what your responsibility would be then on day two. 
Is on, this, would this be what a normal, what your insurance would normally cover for chiropractic care? Or does this yeah, cover? They might cover like some if of, you already know that, do you, yeah. do you know what it would be? Do we is already it, know what it would be? No, I already know what my insurance okay. covers for chiropractic. Okay. Would it be the same or is this Yeah, different? there's some other things too, like vibration therapy that might be recommended okay. in the program that, that if we code it as vibration therapy or manual therapy, that they'll cover that as well. Okay. So your list of things might be this deep or it might be that deep, okay. and we figure out what the insurance will pay or what they won't pay. But yeah, that's, that's important to have that um, information, if, I mean, if you already know that. But we'll, we'll, we'll do the research on that as well. So how can I do that? What I'm gonna do is save me some time. In order to save me time to be able to cut this from four six, because I always wanna know, well, why is he doing that? Why, why, what's in it for him? Well, one, I want you to be able to see what my program is like, because I really think the program sells itself. So if I gotta lower the barrier so somebody can step in and say, oh, I'll give it a try. It's only 90 bucks, I'll give it a try. But the other thing is that we're gonna save time because I'm gonna give you either a link to YouTube where I've cut a video, uh, or a DVD if you can't do that. And we're gonna give what's called a uh, migraine recovery video, okay? Recovery, three, okay, you know what I mean. Recovery DVD. So we're gonna give you the recovery DVD that I would need you to watch before you come in. And what it really does is it goes over what to expect during the exam and what it means and why am I doing all these crazy tests and all that stuff. So you come in, you have you will have watched that and you go, okay, when he does this finger to nose test, I know now that he's checking the cerebellum. And we're not gonna test you on it, but you'll have the you'll have the gist. You'll get the understanding of that. So by you sitting through this, this, um, this explanation, I don't have to sit in there in the exam room and explain, okay, now what I'm gonna do is the exam and here's what it's gonna do. I covered that on a video. Number three, and this is, this is in, uh, this covers the gluten story, which is what we were talking about. We would need you to sign up for the healthcare class. Sign up for the healthcare class, it's no charge. It's a benefit to you, but I need you to come to the healthcare class because we answer the question: Why gluten? Why dairy? Why are you picking on? Why are you picking on eggs? Why are you picking on all this stuff? And guys, I've tested people, and they tested clear for gluten. So don't, don't think I'm saying everybody's off gluten. I thought I was clear when I ran the test. My son had it tested; he's clear, clear on everything. So no limitations. But anyway, at the healthcare class, that is held on Wednesdays, and we'll get the date to you. Do we have a date on the healthcare class? We do. So, 17th, Wednesday, 17th, 5.30. October 17th, 5.30. So check that, if you're able to make that, it's fine. If not, we have other ones that are coming up. Uh, I think I got all that. Um, does anybody have any questions so far? Good, I think I've done a good job then. So the last number, the last number in figuring out the combination on your migraine. We all want to know that. We have the 411, we, we have our action steps. The last number to unlock and unravel this is this. I don't know. I know that's a big letdown, but I really don't know until we do all the tests, until we really dig deep and figure out what it is. It is like a combination key. And there's a lot more than four little numbers that or five little numbers that we're gonna we're gonna you know dial into your lock. Every single person is different, people respond to different therapies. So that's why we put all this together. I do know for sure that if we choose to do nothing, we just take the 411, we're not really gonna make any progress at all. Um, so I do know that for sure. The other approach that you could try would be the medical surgical approach. And that's a pretty radical approach. We could just go ahead and take your special off there. And we could take that. Everybody in the front row always backs, but we could do that approach, okay? And the reason I do that is because I think it's pretty powerful because we unlocked it, didn't we? We figured it out. But you see, this lock right here is never going to work the same as it was intended to work. Okay. So the Imatrix, the medication approach is may unlock it, but that's really kind of a temporary situation. And now this lock is never going to work the same as it was intended. So what we got to do is we need to dig deep and we need to figure out the combination. Okay. So at this point, my staff can answer some questions. I am due on the Ravana Trail. I noticed that I got the, the, uh, the information that I'm about 15 minutes late. I'm sorry for holding you over. We did have some good questions. I'm not blaming you, but we had uh, 
Um, gone over about 15 minutes, so didn't do it in the 53 minutes that I was hoping for. Um, so if you all have any other questions, my wife is, is a chiropractor, she's my chiropractor, uh, and is Jeff still up there? Yep. And Jeff can answer questions, what about insurance, what about this? You'll drop off your, your uh, insurance information up at the front. Uh, thank you for your time. I look forward to reinventing your life, giving you the return on investment of 10 to 1 and finding that extra strategy for you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for very informative. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. I nice look forward to seeing you. you. Nice to meet you. you Did you want, to, you want me to give my pen back? You can have your pen. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Have fun. Thank you so much.